Hey guys, welcome back to Wall.com. So I got a message on Instagram the other day. It was a young man. Uh, he wanted to know how to bid a job. And he was going out into a field. He was going to weld up some aerospace parts for a contractor, but he didn't know what to charge. And I think originally he's going to charge like 20 bucks an hour or something like that. And I said, you can't think like an employee. At this point, you have to think like a business owner. So I kind of wanted to go, it gave me an idea to do a topic on how exactly do you bid a job. Now, I could stand up here all day and tell you what I charge for field work and tell you what I charge for my shop rates. And you could try the same thing in your neck of the woods where your cost of living is completely different and you'd probably lose your ass or you wouldn't get any jobs because you're bidding too high. Uh, so what I'd like to do is kind of break it down Barney style or break it down very simple and teach you guys not only to figure out what you should be charging, but figure out how to come up with that number, okay? So we're gonna go ahead over here and uh, bring out the whiteboard. First, have to figure out how much money we should charge. What, what does it cost? What is the cost of doing business? Everybody's heard of the term, well, that's the cost of doing business, right? Um, how much is it gonna cost me to run my business? So what you wanna figure out, these are all hypotheticals, okay? These aren't hard numbers. Use nice round numbers just to uh, make things easier. What I highly recommend is get on YouTube after this video and go find out how to work a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet, okay? Because once you put all these values in there, you can change them from time to time and everything will automatically populate if you put in the correct formulas. So I highly recommend learning how to use Microsoft Office if you're gonna be running a business. So let's say we have a shop, right? We got this shop, uh, this is where we're gonna do all of our work. The shop cost me $1,000. I gotta pay the man every month for my shop, right? In addition to that, I'm using a lot of electricity, 350 bucks a month. Like I said, these numbers are just plucked out of thin air. Um, these aren't hard numbers. Utilities, what's it gonna cost? You definitely want Wi-Fi in your facility so you can do business. Uh, you're gonna need an internet connection of some sort so you can send and receive bids. You need water and you know all, all the other, any utilities that get lumped into there. I would add the truck in there as well because you get to pick up parts. The truck is a business expense. You're gonna need that, right? And then we have insurance. Now, insurance is probably gonna be a lot higher than $300 a month, like I said, random numbers. Figure out what your insurance is gonna be and that's your, your business insurance. So limited liability. For the state of Florida where I was working, they required at least a million dollars worth of coverage. It was like 600 bucks a year. So it wasn't too bad, right? But then you also need to have insurance on your vehicle, uh, insurance on yourself. The, certain states require workers comp for the state of Florida where I'm at. I'm workers comp exempt. As long as I don't hire more than five employees, I'm workers comp exempt and I don't have to pay that fee. Then I need to figure out how much I'm going to pay myself. Now, don't be getting greedy and be like, you know, I wanna make $80 an hour. You'll get there one day, right? But for starters, you need to tally up all your expenses, your mortgage or your rent payment, whatever that's gonna be, health insurance, uh, how much you know, for your personal vehicle, your cell phone, internet, utilities, electricity, whatever the case may be. And once you get that number, you wanna divide that by minimum hours that you're planning on working per week, okay? 40 hours a week, four weeks in a month, 160 hours, right? So figure out total of all your bills, divide that by 160. That's roughly what you need for a salary, okay? This is just, like I said, pulled out of thin air once again. Let's say my, my average expenses are $3,200 a month with everything included. Divide that by 160, $20 an hour for 160 hours per month. <clears throat> then we're gonna tally all this stuff up. What's, what's the cost of doing business per month? Okay, go ahead. All right, so it's gonna cost us $5,625 US, right? That's what it's gonna cost me per month to do business. So now <clears throat> I have to divide that by the minimum hours I expect to work. Okay, well, I'm not including overtime in this, this formula here. You can figure out your overtime wages later on, usually anything over what the cost of doing business is. Once you pay yourself, you're gonna put the profit back into your company, pay your vendors for all the materials, all that good stuff. We'll, on the flip side, we'll go ahead and we'll bid our first job after we figure out what our charge out rate should actually be. So like I said, 160 hours, that's gonna be the minimum because welding is just like construction or, or a lot of the other trades, it's feast or famine. You're either humping it, you know, and you're doing six 12s or, you know, you're, you're barely making ends meet. Hopefully you're hitting at least 40 hours. So base it off the minimum amount of time you plan on working per month. Hopefully it's, you know, 40 hours is, you know, about average. So we have 160 hours per month. So we figure out 5625 divided by 160, 5625 divided by 160 
is $35 and we'll round up 16 cents. So 35, 16, that's how much I need to charge per hour to hit you know, all my bills, pay everything. Just These are just my operating costs. This isn't bidding a job. This is just the operating cost. What's the cost of doing business? So now my, my charge out rate is 35, or 35, 16 and out. Now we're gonna go through and figure out how to bid a job. Like I said, these numbers are all hypothetical. You're probably going to have a lot more expenses, a lot more line items in here, and they're probably gonna be a lot more than, uh, than what these values are here. Even around Florida, uh, you're hard pressed to find a good place for a thousand bucks a month to run a shop out of. All hypothetical numbers, you're most likely gonna have more. Obviously, the more you have, the bigger this number is gonna get, the bigger your hourly charge out rate is going to be. Okay, that's why most companies are charging, at least around here, about $100 an hour for field rates and 65 to $75 an hour in the shop. That's per man hour. Because once I start hiring employees, I've got state and local income tax, there's federal tax, social security tax, unemployment tax, uh, insurance for the people, benefits, all that stuff goes into it on top of their hourly wage. So it may cost you $50, $55 an hour to keep an employee working that's getting $16 an hour. So you have to, you have to figure that out. What's it gonna cost? What's the cost of doing business of hiring that employee? So if you're just, this is just for a one man operation. So obviously if you have more people, salary is gonna go up and then you have to figure out what those expenses are. That's why I said, go through, figure out how to use Microsoft Excel. You can plug all this stuff in, formulas are, are well, you know, you can put in the formulas, everything will populate for you. It takes a lot of the guesswork out. So let's go ahead, now that we have our 35, 16 an hour, let's go ahead and bid our first job. The guy reached out to me on Instagram, said he's welding some either eighth inch or quarter inch material or a mix of the two. We know right now that we need to make 35, 16 to pay ourselves and keep our business above water. So now we have to figure out, let's say it's gonna take me 20 minutes to do one piece. So now I can do three pieces an hour, right? And let's just say for math's sake, he has 100, he's got 100 of these pieces, right? All right, so that's about 34 hours worth of work, right? 34 hours total. Multiply my 34 hours times 30, 35, 16 an hour, and you're gonna get We get $1,195.44. That's what I'm gonna to charge to do this job. Now, the guy that asked me the question also wanted to know, should I charge less because I'm gonna use his equipment or should I charge more if I use my equipment? No, this is, this is what I'm going to charge whether I'm using his equipment or whether I'm gonna use the stuff that I'm bringing with me. You don't know what you're walking into. You know, it could be a prehistoric machine. Uh, it could be something you're not familiar with. He might not even have the right equipment to do the job. Bring your stuff with you or look at it you know, ahead of time. If, uh, if he insists you use his equipment, he's paying for your experience and your time, not your tools, okay? So you have, to, you have to figure that into the process. If I'm gonna use his equipment, good. That's less wear and tear on my equipment. It's gonna get a break. That dog's gonna hunt another day, just not today. If I go in there and his materials, you know, his, his stuff is crap, I'm gonna bring this in. I don't have to tell him, hey, I'm gonna charge you some additional money because I'm gonna use my own equipment. You've already got the funds taken care of. You've already secured your bid. This is what you're gonna charge. Now let's say we're going back into the, the realm of hypotheticals again. You have to provide the materials. You have to provide the consumables. You have to provide your own equipment, all that good stuff. Let's run through another exercise. All right, so we walk in, we get a, we get a phone call. Customer B is on the phone now. Hey man, I need you to build me 20 widgets. What's it gonna cost to build these 20 widgets? Well, I'm gonna get the prints and the specs and all the other details of the work that's gonna be provided. And then I have to figure out, once again, the cost of doing business. What is it gonna cost me to build these widgets? Let's say that I'm fronting all the material, I'm fronting all the consumables, I'm performing all the work, and I'm utilizing all of my own equipment. I go home, I take the prints, I print them off, or I look at it on the computer, and I say, you know, I can bang out these 20 widgets in 10 hours. But it's going to cost me $600 in material. So now I have to do a material layout. I have to figure out what all material I'm gonna need, reach out to my supplier, get the materials. So I'm probably gonna add an additional two hours into this, right? Because now I've had to sit down, figure out, calculate, order, get the materials, facilitate the delivery and all this stuff. So now I'm up to 12 hours because I have two hours of logistics, 10 hours of actual labor. Like I said, we're gonna keep this pretty simple because uh, everybody's situation is going to be different depending on 
what widget you're going to build. So very simple. Time and material is going to take me 12 hours, and I have $600 worth of material that I'm going to facilitate. So what I would do is I'd, I'm going to take my 35, 15 an hour times 12 hours, right? That's $421.80 in labor, plus the $600 in the materials. Okay, now comes the fun part, consumables. I have to supply welding gas. I have to supply the electrodes or the filler metal that I'm going to be using, tungsten, you know, whatever the case may be, contact tips, nozzles, um, oxyacetylene, you know, whatever, whatever you, anything that gets consumed during the process, anything that causes excessive amount of wear and tear or that you swap out. So grinding discs especially. So I figure out 4280 plus 600. So I figure out this is gonna cost $1,021.80, right? So I, what I did when I was running my business was I would add 20%, 1021.80 times 0.20. So I'm gonna add $204.36. So $204.36, that's gonna be consumables. Like I said, cutoff wheels, grinding disc, blades, gas, everything you could think of. Once I add these two together, I'm up to $1,226.16. Now, I need to account for profit, right? Because I have to put money back in my business. Now, this isn't extra money you're gonna stuff in your pocket, because remember, you're only drawing a salary of $20 an hour for every hour that you're gonna work in the company, because you wanna put money back into the company. Most folks that start off a business, they don't pay themselves for the first two years. I thought that was baffling, right? You're gonna pay yourself a decent salary to be able to get by, but you're not really going to make yourself uh, a killing for at least the first two, two years of business. You wanna put money back into your business so you can grow that business, okay? So now I'm gonna add 10% profit. So I'm gonna add another $122.62. Add all this together, $1,000. $348.78. So to build these 20 widgets, <clears throat> at the end of the day, I'm gonna charge the client $1,348.78. Like I said, you can put this into a spreadsheet so it becomes easier. You've got time, materials, consumables, profit, all the other stuff that you have to factor in there because you may, more, you may need more than just the raw steel or aluminum that's gonna to take to do the job. You might have to buy specialty hinges, locking hardware, you know, it's, it's all gonna depend on what you're doing. Do, do you have to outsource any of this stuff? When I was doing it, I had to build a lot of stair pans and I couldn't bend the stair pans myself because I didn't have access to a break. So I contracted that out. I, would, uh, I drew everything up, I sent it out to another company that was able to manufacture the, stair, uh, the, uh, the stringers for me. They charged me a certain amount of money. What I would do is, what did it cost me to do business? Let's say it cost me another 200 bucks, okay? So 200 bucks, that gets added in here along with your materials. So that 600 then becomes 800. So figure out all the materials you need to do this job. All the hardware that goes along with this, any adhesives that you have to use, glues, epoxies, anything like that, that's gonna get built into the job, okay? You have to account for all that stuff because we're not working and, and doing this business out of the kindness of our heart. So that's just a couple of different ways you figured out how much you should be realistically charging. Uh, we figured out two different ways of how to bid two different types of job. Whether you're doing it on site for somebody, they're providing everything, and then we went through and did another one to figure out what it's gonna cost us to do the same exact job, but this time we're supplying the consumables, the labor, and the materials, all of our equipment and tools. That's just a couple ways you can do it. Like I said, this number to me seems very, very low. Once again, you have to figure out your operating costs or where you want to be. Another thing you wanna look at is What's everybody else in the neighborhood charging? Because if everybody else has a $65 an hour charge out rate, which is reasonable, like I said, this is really low ball in here with this one. If somebody else is charging $50 an hour, I don't wanna roll in and do it for 35, right? I don't wanna go out there and cut any throats. I want to be a competitive business operator. I want people to call me, not, not really based on price, but based on word of mouth, that I can do a, a good job for the client, that I can show up on time, get the job done right, I have a good reputation and I don't want to sell myself short. So maybe go to an AWS meeting or network with some of the people that are doing the same type of work in your industry. There's people on Facebook or Instagram in your area. You could probably reach out to them. They can give you a rough estimate. I know within Florida, the county that I was at, there was a business development center. You can go in there and you can kind of figure out what you're supposed to be charging. Uh, there's a book called RS Means. Uh, if you want to buy one of those books, or I'm sure it's merged and integrated online. Now you can buy a membership through RS Means. They could tell you roughly what 
everybody else in the industry in your area is charging to do that exact same work uh, per square foot or depending on you know what type of uh, occupation that it is that you're doing. So look into those avenues. Make sure that your price isn't absorb or exorbitantly high. If everybody else is charging $100 an hour for their services and you're charging $150, you better have a damn good reason for that $50 increase per hour So, because your bids are going to come in a lot higher. So try to figure out what everybody else in the area is making. Make sure you're staying competitive. I uh, hope you guys found the information uh, relevant. Uh, hopefully it's going to help you along your journey. As always, if you guys have questions, comments, or concerns, you can put them down in the comment section. Until next time, make every world better than your last.